SoundCloud. Yeah, you know, SoundCloud. You remember them? <laughs> yeah, I was wondering. So this is a. I remember they did some move to start monetizing like a couple years ago, right? Where you can start like making money through SoundCloud. And this is what this is about, or. I think this is because uh, they were about to go out of business from, like right. a couple years ago, right? Were, Chance the Rapper saved them, right? Oh, they were Kmart. <laughs> they were Kmart for sure. Yeah, the Chance the Rapper <laughs> was like, "I'm working on a SoundCloud thing." That's the last time we heard. I guess, I guess Chance did it. <laughs> Chance and uh, even Steven. Oh no, no, it was. Uh, what's my man? Not Ashton Kutcher. It was Ashton even, Kutcher. Even. I'm thinking that's Shia LaBeouf. I'm thinking Ashton Kutcher though. <laughs> oh, we talking about what? Punked. Oh my god, I forgot about that show. <laughs> he was the Impractical Joker. That's funny. The original Impractical Joker. That was him. Oh yeah, because he, he run he I mean he has a large stake in SoundCloud. So I'm sure it's him and us uh, and Chance the Rapper that was had a little powwow. You know, smoked the blunt and figured it all out together. I'm sure it was just them two. Okay. I mean, SoundCloud. I thought about throwing some shit back up on SoundCloud. I mean, why not? Like, just to see what you know, what the community is like, just to see, uh, you know, who knows. SoundCloud is a you digital know. vinyl. Mm. That's how I look at it. SoundCloud is a digital vinyl. Like, yeah, it's on SoundCloud. If you're a true fan, that's where you catch the. Uh, that's where you catch the uh, they they B sides. That's where you catch their. Uh, you know, their their small circuit tour, you know? Like, I think it's a great place. But, I think they should but, market it that way. But can you still put music on there that's not cleared? Or is that not a no-no now? Ooh, because, know. you know what I'm saying? Like, like everything's up for monetization. Like I think, well, Because I SoundCloud used to be just like, if I just did a quick freestyle, I can just upload it on here and not have to worry about getting sued. Even if I get a million plays... And I don't gotta worry about getting sued because it's just SoundCloud not making no money like you know that was the but now do that. because they're making money like well, I don't know if it's the last place there's other there's other places popping up I'll, but I mean SoundCloud is like the last big big place I could think of you know because I see all, I'm always hearing about all these little smaller apps that are coming out that are like oh put your music here this and that all these little you know but it's like I don't really see one that was dominating the way SoundCloud was for a while. So, yeah, I mean, like a Spinrilla. I mean, like, I just put my music on this app called Fuego. It's because my homeboy has been using it and been getting like some good results from it. But like, I'm always hearing about it. There's like another one called like Lum Lum L U M or. Some shit like that. I can't remember what the fuck it was called, but like, I did that for a little bit. Like, there's all these different apps I'm always hearing about. I'm waiting to see if there's gonna be one, like a Tinder kind of app where you can like swipe left and right on songs. Some one that gets like real popular where like people can interact with music like that and artists can like interact with each other like that. Like, um, and that's pretty much what the Fuego app is. So it's pretty dope. But I'm just wondering like how many people are gonna really get on board with that shit. But I feel like there are places where you can still do that and kind of like use it as a testing pool. You know, if you don't want to put do the full Spotify release, Apple Music, all that shit, you know, just throw something out that I made last night because I just want to know how people feel, you know, feel about it today, and I'm excited. Like, you know, people still kind of need that. Artists still need that. Yeah, and that was SoundCloud, and that's why I hung on to SoundCloud for so long because of that reason. Yeah, you know, I voiced this a million yeah. times. It's, that's the last place where you can put a mixtape track up. Like, you hear a song by, you know. Uh, black or her or you know Chris Brown and you're like or whoever and you're like that beat is crazy I need to do something to that and he left a couple bars on the end that you can loop back and you can you know what I mean? like throw it on on SoundCloud like, out uh, tomorrow. Y'all, how y'all feel about it or even I mean even better yeah. for DJs like SoundCloud was amazing for DJs the DJs had no problem worrying about sampling or royalties or clearing anything and being able to put their mix together and just throwing it up for people to enjoy so I mean I nowadays it's almost like TikTok is like the new way for that and you know and you can't even do that for that because you still gotta get things cleared like TikTok is, a, is is almost a record label at this point like TikTok is not just a platform TikTok's 
almost record label. You got to you got to distribute your music through TikTok to get it played there. Like, like when I when I when I'm putting your music up on to uh 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 anything through TuneCore, I have to pay for the ability to have TikTok play it separately from yeah, everyone. You know, there's like like how come you can't just uh. Cause I can record sounds on TikTok right now with, with just going straight through my phone. You right. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people go go around it. But the, but now we're talking like, about obviously like it's one thing to like we're talking about ownership now. Well, I mean, you know, it gets spread around, it gets shared at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, it's, it's your song. It's like you get the notoriety from it. Yeah, you get you 20, know, it still can be useful in the, in the same way. Right now, they're getting twenty percent of what of your original content on TikTok. They take eighty, you get twenty. Okay. If you do it that way. I mean, on SoundCloud, you wasn't making nothing though. SoundCloud, you wasn't making nothing. But if you got a million plays. But if I'm having to get things clear, well, yeah, I mean, all right, all right okay, I see, I see your argument. If if we're doing it that That's way saying, and we're just, just posting things up, you yeah. can just throw some shit up yeah. on there, okay, and just people spread it and share it and just go, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to play those games if you don't want to. Right. No, I get that. You know. If you just if you want to get it like uploaded up like on the yeah, if you just want to throw shit up there, you can. That's what I'm saying. Like, and that's what the, there's ways to just do that. That's when the NFT thing comes in with TikTok, because now you own the content, but for it to be distributed on TikTok, you got to give TikTok eighty percent. But that's on TikTok. So now, if you take that content and make it an NFT, because now you have an audience and distribute it that way, right? So that's why the so whole, you you just record your little sound on TikTok and then that goes viral and then people want to hear the rest of the song. Maybe you just got a thirty second clip on SoundCloud. People want to hear the whole song. You can NFT like the entire song. Like or you just have or, a crazy dance yeah. or it's just a funny poem you did or a crazy painting, whatever it may have been that went viral on TikTok. They still get eighty percent of it on TikTok. You know what I mean? Right. So. Uh, uh, if the content makes, if the content is monetized, whatever the content is, if it's monetized, TikTok is eighty percent. But you can't be on TikTok trying to like make money off the platform because that's not not to say you can't make money from the platform, but it's not going to be directly from TikTok. It's going to be more from the, the attention you that you got that exactly. you can convert into. Yeah, that's, because that's one thing I've definitely seen all the creators talk about is like the creator fun is shit. Now, not only is it shit, but like it doesn't correlate to anything. Like people can't figure out. This many views gets you paid this much or this much. People, there is no correlation. People just get paid random numbers for random views, and there's really no explanation whatsoever. So it's like a lot of people move back over to YouTube because YouTube is a lot more transparent about how much you're getting paid per stream and shit like that. TikTok is just kind of like just giving people, like, I don't know. A lot of people seem to be frustrated with that shit. So I feel like, yeah, just use it to build your audience and go somewhere else, you know? And that's usually, and that's usually how it should be looked at. All these platforms, any new platform, should be looked at just like that. Where people want to hang on to it, it's like any other type of stock or crypto or anything you try to like. Either you're gonna hold it or you're gonna trade it. What are you using it for? Are you using it to gain value from it, or are you trying to hold it to gain future value from it? You know. So, and that's how people need to start looking at all of these assets these 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 tech assets these platforms and all of it it's just ways to collect attention information contacts uh connections to people and you know without trying to go (laughs) without trying to go away from this topic too far you know i think that's the main thing that helped uh soundcloud survive was the fact that it is a platform where the masses can still conjugate. It's it's still the it's still the uh, water cooler in the office. You know the boss isn't hanging around there. You can still express yourself the way you would like to, and around around a whole hundred people with maybe that might be like minded or not, but it's a you you can express yourself freely right there. Uh, in the midst of a place where it's formatted to. You know, have to fit to these norms to be able to be played or heard or communicated. Right. So that was my biggest thing that I loved about SoundCloud for so long. But you know, I haven't uh, kept up with them because of the simple fact that I 
don't use them as much. I have a lot of content still on there that I go back to, when, especially when people are like, oh, you still make visas? Like, oh, no, I don't want to make that many, but just check these out because my head wants to be tied to tie. You know? So, <laughs> like, go check it out. <laughs> go listen to these, and they're all on SoundCloud. I never right. have to worry about anything. I always posted everything on SoundCloud for the same, for the the main reason that it will always sit there and and I always have that that uh that record right there. It's the same thing with uh DJ booth, not DJ booth, but uh Audio Mac. The Audio Mac is dope like that too. Oh yeah. That's another platform. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't been on there in the same same thing with SoundCloud I haven't been on there in a while, but I definitely used to use it, you know. So and nothing wrong with it. I love it. I got playlists like crazy on both platforms, SoundCloud and Audio Mac. Amazing playlist. Songs that I cannot find on any streaming platform. I got a great playlist on SoundCloud. Right. Like, Same. That's, SoundCloud is like, I got, I got gems on there. Like, I can only find that shit on SoundCloud. I don't know where the fuck else that song even exists. And, I, and I'm glad that SoundCloud is doing things like this to, to maintain those, uh, the content that's already on there because... I've, I've always had these conversations it's like I have playlists all over the place I have playlists on like sound click beats on sound click s- songs on like uh like all these all these platforms but it's like if these platforms go away what happens like I lose my playlist and it's not that I lose the playlist it's I can't find those songs on streaming platforms anymore because the exclusivity of those songs were so tied to those platforms that you just can't find them anywhere else because of the regulations like you can't put the songs that you can put on SoundCloud you can't put anywhere else the songs you can put on audio man you can't put anywhere else but they live there and they're on playlists and it's like when I go back to those playlists I can listen to those songs but I can't find them anywhere else I can't buy them you know what I mean I can't you know what I mean if, if I wanted to give all the money in the world I couldn't I couldn't own that song because it only lives there so I think like things like that is very important to maintain like even an nft an nft you still have to purchase to to listen to it these you just have to be able to have access to it to listen to it and you can't even access these songs anywhere else and that's 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 a mate that's crazy exclusivity right there yeah so i'm glad that they're maintaining what they're you know their true roots are is the the, the indie artist and uh, pursuit of um, independence and, and freedom of expression. But they threw me off when they went with Lil Pump as their like, flagship artist. I'm like, all right, you do that? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> was there? I didn't know. I didn't know he was even. I mean, I know he was like a SoundCloud artist, but like, did they? For their new for their new uh, initiative that they're uh, rolling out here in this article, it's like a, a fan fan driven uh, roster. Well, it's pretty much artists that SoundCloud signed, but they're like SoundCloud's roster. So they're just pretty much artists that on that has music on the platform that they're giving special treatment to, and in, in, in exchange for the special treatment, they get. You know kickbacks, so they're signed. <laughs> you know, okay. So one of the artists right. that, and then right now they got eight artists that they're signed that have on their roster. My bad, on their roster right now of their featured artists, and one of them is Lil Pump, formerly of Warner. So that was interesting. Cause then he give like eleven million dollars from Warner or some shit. I don't know. I don't know how that ended up, but. I didn't know. Oh, you got dropped. I didn't know what the case was from Lil Pump. I just know I stopped hearing about him after a while. So I just figured, you know, everyone Dubai just moved on. Money. So. <laughs> Can't call it. <laughs> J. Cole. J. Cole predicted a lot of this, but you know. <laughs> I mean, he sat down on the couch and talked to him about this. He was like, look, this is exactly what's about to happen to you. <laughs> like, this, is, this is exactly what's about to happen to you. I promise. Was it Lil Pump he talked to? Was that Lil Pump? Yeah. It was Lil Pump on the couch. Yeah. That was that, that. That conversation was trash. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even remember who, who it was now. No, I think the conversation was, I was trash. Like, Why did y'all do this? No, I remember that because I think the conversation was trash because people kept. I think 
they got into J. Cole's head to the point where they was like, maybe he is a good kid. He just needs somebody <laughs> to talk to him. And then J. Cole sat down on the couch like, this dude is fucking... <laughs> yeah. You can just see in his face, like, why did y'all... Who set this up? Because the niggas, a lot of niggas don't have personality like that. Like, a lot of niggas don't have personality like that, and they be too cool to have a conversation. That's when you start realizing a lot of them when you start having interviews. Like, they be too cool to, like, actually talk to you like a real person. They have to have, like, a viral moment every time or, like... You know, yeah, try to like say some side. flash shit that you don't understand, and you know, like shut the fuck up, like. <laughs> Seriously, uh, that's how that shit goes. Seriously, yeah. But that's enough on SoundCloud. I'm just glad they're still kicking. They they just talk in this article. They're just pretty much talking about their growth from uh, 2020. And they they raise another 200. Eighteen million or something like that, over twenty twenty numbers. So they're still kicking. They're still kicking. I'll say they were. We're definitely on the ropes. Last time I heard, so oh, that's what's yeah. up. Looking like Martin and shit. <laughs> yeah, naughty face. All right, what's that? That one? What's the? Uh... Oh shit! I forgot. I'm. Uh... <laughs> Moderating over here. Jump back up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me see. John Lee Hooker. I mean, like. Yeah. You know who that is? I mean, I don't know who <laughs> I don't know who John Lee Hooker is, but I'm more interested in how much um, music and catalogs uh, these these labels are buying, especially BMG. Look at this shit. The catalog is is crazy. Wait, let me see. The catalog is insane. I know they have like a list of people on here somewhere, including like ZZ Top, Tina Turner, Motley, Motley Crue, uh, uh, Fleetwood Mac. So I mean, and this dude is like well known. He's a jazz musician, but he's well known. I don't know, him, but. I mean, when, when you're being named and people are interested in catalogs of yours and you're and, and, and they're also interested in catalogs of Tina Turner's and Motley Crue and uh, Philly with Mac and, and they're acquiring these, they got plans for them. And jazz music is, sounds amazing in movies. So, you know, it might be a, a publishing play. Let's, let's toss that out there. Maybe. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Definitely. I mean, what else would it be? Oh, that's exactly what it is. What I'm saying, like, it doesn't matter if we don't know yeah. him, that type of catalog being wrapped together around his music. They must want it, and it's probably one song that they want. <laughs> you know what I mean? It might have just been one song. This is one song that they keep talking about. Boom, boom. I never heard of it. Um, I didn't play it either. I should, I should check it out. But John Lee Hooker, boom, boom. Let's see what else they got on there, man. I want to see the shit about Snoop and the NFT. Uh, Sweden Pop House investing in music rights. Are we going to get there and say all of this? You said what? So we're going to get there. No, I saw it on there already. I was trying to figure out, like. Oh, Sweden Pop House. What is this one about? It? See, this one was interesting. This is, I thought this was dope only because of my marketing brain as well. Because they said add Aaron BB and EQT execs. And first of all, nobody knows who EQT is unless you actually know who EQT is. But everybody knows who Airbnb is. But what is EQT? Exactly. Is that like Airbnb? <laughs> nothing. It's, it's not even. No. It has nothing to do with Airbnb. But they put Airbnb uh-huh. in there because everybody knows who Airbnb is. So now, so, so I'm just labeling it as clickbait because of that. And all they're talking about is they okay. took some people who used to work there and put them on their team at this company. <laughs> so it has no ties uh, to Air- okay, exactly okay. has no ties to Airbnb. It has no right, ties right. to the other companies. It's just yeah. I feel like that's always like a that's always like a flex. I see even with like NFT projects. Yeah, you know that people starting this project used to work for so and so. It's like so they got fired exactly. and started an NFT. Well, what's up? Like like what? <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like a good thing I'm supposed to invest into this. Like, explain yourself. <laughs> they used to work at Google. Wow. 
what happened to how come they don't still work at Google? Right. What happened? No. What That's they, a good what job. Did they like, do why do they leave? Were they the janitor? <laughs> like, what's, exactly. No, what was doing? Like, yeah. You sold cookies at Google. And right. Shit. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> got a lot of jobs at Google. Right. Security. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But yeah, that was, was about. I mean, but that's pretty much Walter what that, Jones. Oh, uh, Walter Jones. He uh, he like managed like what ASAP Rocky. He, he he got a whole bunch of names on his belt. Actually, he's a big A and R. He just got signed uh to Sony Music for A uh, and R. So he does really good at picking out talent. Lil Yachty, City Girls. So I guess he was out there uh scouting for <laughs> three hundred for real. So he scouted uh, G Easy, ASAP Rocky, Pusha T, her. Nah, you talking about uh, Q QC, little little Yachty and City Girls. Well, yeah, 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 QC. What was I say? Three hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three hundred. Three hundred got like Young Thug and I think Dirk and Chief Keef and shit. I think right. I don't know. For some reason, I I felt like they were all one at some point. But yeah, quality control. Yeah. But yeah, so flowers, you know, my man is flowers. Walter Jones out here doing this. There thing. you go. Sign, develop songwriters such as her, Lil Baby, Quay, Global, Chi Chi, Lil Yachty, City Girls, Alessia Cara, G Easy, ASAP Rocky, Pusha T, and many more. Sign and develop. Okay. You know what I mean? So, I always gotta give people their flowers. Especially when you pulling out talent like that. Like, like how you find all them people? Where, where were you? Like, he was the, he was definitely the guy that people was like yo I got somebody for you he was the one that was in the room that you wanted to be in like he was the one that somebody he was in the room that the guy that could get in the room invited you to <laughs> straight up okay like how cause people had to yeah. bring him these artists he didn't just waltz around and just find ASAP Rocky Lil Yachty you know, Jeezy. Like, <laughs> like, they just find these people. People brought them to them. Yeah. I be wondering, like, how do these people just comb the internet all day? No. Like, have a team of people that just comb the internet? Like, how he, does that work? He probably has a team, or he's just well connected. Or like, it just, was it just like. He's just that right. guy. Like, that guy that people go to is like, yo, I'm, I'm going to tell you about my mans. My mans. You know? <laughs> my mans, he, he in the industry. Right. And once you have that track record, people come find you. Exactly. You know? That's so. what I'm saying. He seems like that type of guy. Yeah. Like, to be able to get that type of roster under your belt as you found that talent, like, nah, people bringing that shit to you. Right. Which is not a bad place okay. to be. Uh, kudos to him hats off to him to be that guy oh yeah work work your way to be that guy oh, yeah. alright now that's what the fuck I was trying to look at this <laughs> oh this is where we could take it all we can go we can go on and on from here now <laughs> we can segue we can segue yeah, nice, yeah, right? nice little segue <laughs> situation going on here hold on so this is this is Snoop's NFT I didn't even hear about this like he got a bunch though. Snoop didn't hear about it. That's the funny thing about Snoop. Snoop is Snoop is just he got a dope team. He's smart enough to I'm gonna say he made forty four mil. He heard he heard about it now. Shit. I mean, how much how much nephew? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, seriously. I see you say how much. <laughs> did you did you see him even talking about it? I walking in the Hell living yeah. room and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, forty four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. At the end of that deal, they said he was, he was supposed to make, uh, if he sold everything, he's supposed to make 125 million. Oh, Snoop getting to a bag. Yeah. You know what he's doing. 
I mean, he don't know what he's doing, but he know that NFTs is a, is important. <laughs> you don't gotta know. That's the thing. I that's what I'm saying. <laughs> keep trying to tell people. I'm like, you don't gotta fucking know. Like, you know, like even with crypto and shit, like you don't have to really know what. Like, listen, buy these. Right. <laughs> like, you don't have to know what they do and all the shit. Just listen. Just buy them. It does. You don't even have to know all the backgrounds into that shit. Hold it. Wait a couple years. Like, just you ain't gotta know. You just gotta. You gotta trust the person telling you. <laughs> you gotta have smart money. You have smart advisors. You know what I'm saying? Know how to like find the, the information. Exactly. But like, you don't have to know all the back ends of how everything works at all. Like, if you want to know, sure. Like, it helps definitely. A lot of these people don't know what's going on. They just know where to put their money at. Oh, this is the spot. Okay, bet. Yep. Like all the people that I look to are telling me this is it. So this is it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's usually how it works. Now, the crazy thing about the crypto game is, it's, it's a numbers game. <laughs> like, like this is this is yeah. showing you exactly that you can make anything a currency if enough people believe it, believe in it. Yeah, we can make. It's really making people realize like the word currency is just you know, it's a little looser than you thought because like we. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not just the dollar or the currency that you. It's like nah, it's all types. Or the fact of that exchange, exchange, you know? exactly. Or the fact that we're not that far from the bartering system that people think we are. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like we, this is exactly. a bartering system. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. That's all it is. That's literally all it is. Somebody was just like, you know what? Instead of carrying all these damn furs and shit around, how about we just say this is worth this amount and I'll give you this. And you just buy this fur later. Isn't this easier than me actually just like giving you this cow? You can just give me like <laughs> right. these coins and you can go get your milk or whatever. You know, like <laughs> you can get you can get a cow from yeah. closer to your town instead of having to walk from way over here. Or exactly. or exactly. maybe you get all the way home and don't even want the cow anymore. <laughs> Maybe you want some chickens. Guess what? Right. <laughs> right. 